This is Boomer Life on CL 650. Thanks for joining us. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm Joanne Sutton. Today, we're speaking with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group Financial Services. Markets continue to remain very unsettled, but some fundamentals never change. Ensure that you understand your investments, what's in them, what risks they have, and how the investment fits into your overall investment plan. I still like the idea of a financial cookbook that you raised in the uh, last portion of our show, Jim. Combine two parts money with three parts action, blend it all together with a plan, and review it regularly. I think there's a number of messages in that recipe that could make it challenging for boomers to successfully plan ahead. It is pretty clear that investing is only part of the big picture. So could you share a tip or two with us now to help investors from making so many investment and planning mistakes? I'm happy to, Joanne. Investors, to prevent costly mistakes, please remember the three T's. Time to do the research and anticipate the tax consequences, technique, knowing what you're doing with knowledge and temperament, emotional control. Time, technique, and temperament. Jim, can it really be that simple? Simple, no. Emotion seems to have a knack for ruining all good planning. But if investors can learn to limit how it affects their investment decisions, it could help alleviate many of the common investing mistakes many boomers unknowingly make. And if you're not strong on that front, ask how your advisor can help. So, Jim, how does one ask a person to find courage when they have none? How do you encourage investors to stay focused on diversification, dividends, and their long-term goals when the world around them is in complete turmoil? How do you believe or trust in anyone when everyone seems to be an expert, information is everywhere, and collapse could be just around the corner? You work with a planner to design and create a financial plan, stick with an investing regime, and monitor and adjust accordingly. I sometimes like to follow the wisdom of Warren Buffett. He's incredibly patient. Now, maybe that's one of the reasons he has so much money. And I'm sure if he was here today, he might uh, say, you know, don't be too greedy. I would suggest some of his investing virtues serve him well. Well, investing virtues are hard to see and harder still to practice. If it's hard to control the market outcome, then work on the things that you can control and things you can do. It might seem rather old-fashioned, but I think following these seven virtues as you think about and prepare for retirement and invest your retirement funds can help lead to a prosperous lifestyle. That's true, but maybe with the help of a financial planner like yourself, I'd like to think that it could all really come true. It is generally accepted that it's prudent, and that's our first value, for investors to maintain long-term investment strategies that are based on the expected long-term relative yield of the major asset classes, as opposed to trying to time the market movements. For the purposes of this discussion, let me offer a definition of prudence. The Latin word looking forward or seeing ahead involves the ability to make judgments about the course of events and formulate decisions based on reason and intellect rather than emotion. Jim, I expect the aim is to make logical investment choices that will benefit you over the long term. Sticking with Warren Buffett for a moment, I read an interview he had and they were talking about which investments he would buy and never sell. What's core to your portfolio or is everything replaceable? Okay, I'll play this game. Does this lead to our second investing virtue? It does. And it's diligence. The virtue of effort, persistence and hard work. Don't jump to an investment just because you hear a tip from a friend or another source. Do your homework and study the real risks and return expectations to see how it fits your retirement plan. It's easy to want, you know, an easy answer, but you need to do the work or hire someone to do it for you. 
So I think the key here is raising financial literacy allows you to do and accomplish more. And if you don't have the expertise, time and dedication to manage your own investments, this is where Jim steps in. Give him a phone call, 604-682-5431. So uh, Jim, what's next on our list of investing virtues? Patience. Great investors can teach us lessons we can learn from. The measure of an investment doesn't come in days or weeks. It can take time. Buffett held stock in Wells Fargo for over a quarter century, and it paid off handsomely for him. It's the patient, long-term investors, not the day traders, who build substantial retirement portfolios. Well, I've been hearing your Dalbar studies suggesting that if investors were more patient with their investment holdings, they would have experienced substantially better returns over time. So, okay, we've covered prudence, diligence, and patience as great investing virtues so far. What is number four? The next virtue is courage. Armchair investors may not be emotionally invested in an outcome because they have no likelihood of any real loss. Following the markets is not the same as investing in the markets. It takes courage to invest. It takes courage to be patient, especially when you've handed over your hard-earned money to someone else and things aren't going as you hoped they would. It takes courage to have confidence in your financial plan when the headlines are chaotic. And it doesn't stop here. A financial plan, once adopted, brings with it a more disciplined approach to your money and investment matters and gives investors greater confidence in their financial affairs. So that's courage. What would investing virtue number five be? Now, this one can be tender, but it's humility. Good investment returns sometimes happen in spite of ourselves. Don't be greedy. Setting reasonable performance expectations can help limit the itch to chase higher returns. Well, it kind of makes sense that when you hire a professional and they have a relationship with you, they could bring a lot more to the table. Often, they're there to act as a buffer in volatile markets and a voice of caution when your investment desires venture far from what your intent, your original intent was. So our final investing virtue would be... Charity. Enjoy the fruits of your success. When it comes time to cash in your investments, remember if you're paying tax, you've made gains. Your wealth can do many useful things. It can also provide the means to share with family while you're alive or benefit them once you're no longer here. Also, consider allocating some to those less fortunate than you. A little investing virtue can actually go a long way. And I I can't help but feel, Jim, that simply being reminded of them, it can actually be a powerful ally. Is that your role? My role has more to do with setting planning targets, influencing better savings discipline over time, and helping clients avoid costly investment missteps that investors are prone to make. By choosing to work with me, I'd like to help you feel that if you stick to a plan, you'll be able to get through any economic downturn or unexpected events. So a little earlier, you indicated that if you're getting a late start on retirement planning, it's almost never too late to actually improve your financial picture. The important question you might want to be asking yourself is, what are you actually going to do about it? So this would be a great time to remind you, call Jim, break those unproductive financial habits, pick up the phone. He can actually help you. 604-682-5431. Hey, procrastinators, if I could offer some encouragement to take action, consider giving us a call for help to get started. For most other investors, if you can cut down on avoiding common investment mistakes, that alone can help your overall investment performance. Jim, what are some of the investment mistakes that you see investors wishing that they could actually redo? Getting scared and pulling money out of stocks when the markets tumble, choosing an inappropriate level of risk for their age and their years in retirement, or investing too much money in their employer's uh, company stock plan, or failure to periodically rebalance a portfolio, and the last one, not making and following a financial plan. That's really surprising, isn't it? I guess it really helps to have someone who's able to point out where you could be hurting yourself financially. Uh, What's the second As your financial planner, I want to look at your complete financial picture, your goals, all of your investments, your risk management strategies, cash management practices, 
taxes and insurance policies, your complete financial picture. Okay. I think I'm starting to see why advice can produce significant improvements in financial health and retirement outcomes for individuals. Giving structure to your goals and tying specific plans to those goals makes it a lot easier to realize them. Advisors become essential when people won't do the work themselves or when they don't understand how to do the work themselves and they need guidance. A lot is made about all the wonderful things we can do in retirement, but for many Canadians, the dream just doesn't live up to the reality. Maybe it's time to change that. Maybe it's time. So after what you've heard today, I think it's pretty clear that we need to treat investment planning as a partnership. It's a definite relationship. You can call Jim Doyle and start planning today. So Jim, any final thoughts? Please remember the three T's. Time to do the research and anticipate the tax consequences. Technique, knowing what you're doing with knowledge and temperament, emotional control. This is Boomer Life on CL650. I'm Joanne Sutton. Thanks for joining us today. We've been speaking with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group. If you've been putting off getting your financial house in order and you're ready for a change, it's a good time to call Jim for a second opinion. You can pretty well ask him anything. You can reach Jim Doyle at 604-682-5431 or simply send him an email, jim.doyle at investorsgroup.com. Jim, thanks for your expertise today. And thanks to you for joining us on Boomer Life on CL650. 